Continuing on in section 7.7, .7, let's consider the FBI burglary data set that was we given first given to us in chapter 2. We have three different scattergrams that with three different models and their respective R squared values are given. So our first job was to label each one as linear, exponential, or quadratic, and you can see that I've already done that. So up here is the linear graph. You can see because it's m x plus b, and there's its r squared value. And then over here is the exponential curve. See that curve coming through? And you can tell because the x is in the exponent there. It writes a little bit differently than we've learned. It uses Euler's number e down there. And then the quadratic. There's the ax squared plus bx plus c model. And you can see the three different r squared values. And there was the data right there from chapter 2. So when we look at these three scatter plots, which one appears to be the best, um, do the best job explain? Well, I think that's rather obviously the quadratic model, right? Quadratic model does the best job of fitting the points. So let's try that. The quadratic model comes closest to all the data points, right? Or comes closest to fitting all the data points and so on. All right, does the R squared value support that? All right, so look at your three R squareds. Remember, you want your R squared value to be high. So we have 0 0.77, 0 0.799, and 0.967 right here. So that is the highest one. So yes, it backs it up. So. Yes, the R squared value for the quadratic model was the highest. So the quadratic model appears to be best. But now we get into a much trickier subject, which is which one really is the best model for making predictions? Not the best for R squared or the best for scatter plot. We've answered that question. The best for both the scatter plot and the R squared value was the quadratic model right here. Well, what happens if you're going to look into the future beyond t equals 22? Well, then the exponential one is the best. And I drew it right here. An exponential model, what it's going to do is it's going to decrease and then it's going to flatten out. It will lower slowly and then just kind of smooth out there. But it's never going to go back up and it's never going to become negative, both of which would be impossible because this is the burglary rate. You're not going to have a negative burglary rate. And we don't see any evidence for it going back up. But that's what a quadratic model would do. A quadratic model would curve back up and make a U shape, which means the burglary rate would start climbing again. But we don't have any evidence for that. So even though the quadratic model fit the data points best, it's not best for making predictions because look what's going to happen to that curve. In the future, it's going to keep drawing up, 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 which doesn't really make sense for this data, these data. Similarly, the linear model is terrible because when you draw a line like this, it's going to go, 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 and then it's going to hit the x-axis. And from that point on, you're going to have negative values, which is impossible. right? So the exponential model is actually the best one for predictions because it doesn't do either of these terrible things. It doesn't go back up for no reason, and it doesn't cross the x-axis and give you negative values. All right, so now let's keep going with this comparison of the regression models we have. This is the percent of adults in Michigan with diabetes. So you can see there is the data right there. And this is a scattergram already drawn for you from the calculator. Well, this would appear to be a linear model, right? A linear model is best. Because the data points appear to be growing at a steady rate, more or less, right? It's not perfect, but it's kind of climbing pretty steadily. So it looks very linear. The data look very linear. Okay. So then we're going to find that um, model and find the function and its R squared value. Okay. So let me grab the calculator. And you can see the years there. So I'm going to type in what would probably make the most sense is to make 1990 my starter year. So if I go to stat, edit, clear out the old, 
clear. And then I'm just going to type 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. And then I go over here, 5, 5.7, and so on. And again, you didn't really have a starter year, but it just kind of makes sense to make 1990 your starter year. It's, it's pretty simple. All right, so there we got our data in there. And we said linear is best, so stat, calc, number four, linear regression. Go down to the bottom. I don't really need to store it. I just need it to calculate it. And there it is, right? So let me make that smaller so I can see. Okay, so our regression equation is f of t equals 0 0.2942t plus 3.8478. And our r squared value is 0 0.992. There we go. That's how to find linear regression and how to find the r squared to go with it. All right, now what about the next points? Okay, well... That looks pretty much like an exponential. I mean, it could be a quadratic. It could be half a parabola as well. So that's another way to think about this. But I say we go with exponential. So let's make 1980 our starter year since we're starting off with 85. So let's go here, stat, edit, clear out the old because I don't need any of that stuff anymore. Over here, up, clear, enter. And then what were my years? 5, 8, 11, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and then go over to the right and type in those numbers. All right, I think I've got them all in there. I'll make it bigger so we can see. There we go. So they should all be there, hopefully. Everything's perfect. Yep. And then we're going to run an exponential regression. So stat calculate. An exponential is actually close to the bottom of the list, so it's faster if you hit the up arrow and kind of work your way from the bottom up. So we want number zero, exponential regression. Go down to calculate, press enter, and there it is. I'm going to go type that up in the problem. So let's make that smaller. So oops, we forgot to mention the exponential model was best. because the data appear to form a classic exponential growth curve, right? And then let's find it. E of t, because this is exponential. Actually, I should have labeled this one L of t for linear, just for the heck of it. So that one was a linear model. This one's going to be an exponential model. So if t equals my calculator. All right, so it's 24.403 times 1.198, let's call it, to the t. And there we go. Oh, and we need r squared. I forgot. r squared is 0.9857. Uh, let's see, 0 0.9857. To be honest, I should have squiggly equals here too, because this isn't exact. We've rounded, right, to make these models. So these shouldn't be equal signs. They should be approximations. All right, last but not least, uh, this is quadratic. You, you, it might not be quadratic, but that's your only option for something that goes up and then down like that. So we're going to have to say quadratic model is best. Because the data points go up and then back down. They form a U shape. Okay, so if they're forming that kind of upside down U shape, parabola shape, then quadratic. So now we have to find it. And again, let's pick 1980 as our starter year just to be smart about this. So let's go to stat, edit, clear the old, and type in the new. Okay, so 1980 is our starter. And then over here, I 
think I've got all those in there, right? I think everything looks good. And then go to stat, calculate, number five, you want quadratic regression, number five. So hit five, and then this is all good, calculate, and there it is. And you can see the R squared value is 0.834 down there. All right, so let's type that up. Mm -hmm. Oop, hold on, I didn't mean to do that at all. There we go. Okay, so let's call it Q of T, because it's quadratic, is equal to negative 0.223 T squared um, plus 6.395 T minus 22.988. And R squared is, we should probably make these all approximations, 0 0.834. And there we have all three of the models. So now you know how to find R squared for any kind of model. You know how to find a linear model, an exponential model, and a quadratic model. And you're beginning to understand when to choose which one. But there are some cautions for that. So let's look at this percent of diabetes one. Um, this one... Let me, let me run that again real quick, just so you can see. Hold on one sec. Okay, so I have the data in here again. Now remember, we ran a linear regression model on it. So if I go down here to calculate and I hit enter, I'm going to get a linear regression model and see the R squared value is 0.992 right there. Let me just show you, if I ran a quadratic model on that, if I hit number 5 instead of number 4, and I run it, go down to calculate, and press enter, It also, see that, 0.992. It also has an R-squared value that's really high. So, and that was my comment here. Almost always a quadratic model will have a higher R-squared value than a linear model because it has more variables in it. It has another variable term. But it's not always practical for your predictions. I mean, if you look at this graph, it doesn't look like a curve at all. It looks like a lot. So stick with a linear model if your scattergram backs up that it's a linear model. Similarly, an exponential model like this one can sometimes be better. You can think of it as half a parabola. So there's the right half of the parabola and there's some over here, over here a left half of a parabola. But a lot of times if you think of it as, as a parabola, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for those predictions that be back before the year 1985 because you'd be saying, oh, there were you know a thousand stores before 1985, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. So in our course, for our purposes, if it looks like a half parabola like that, then stick with an exponential model for the most part. And last but not least, real world data doesn't really look like either of these pictures above. Yes, these actually are real world data, but I trimmed down a much bigger data set to get these numbers that we made these pictures from. Real world data often looks much, much more messy like this right here. And that can be harder to gauge what's going on. So real world data doesn't often form a clear pattern, often does not form a clear pattern. Instead, the data are more scattered, hence the term scattergram. So if the data are not curved and they're forming a general increasing or decreasing trend, then stick with the linear model for the, for the purposes of this course. So if you don't see like an arch to this, you don't see like a curve, then it's not exponential nor is it quadratic and stick with a linear model. And just as a side note, these are just a few of the problems that you can run into. There's a lot of problems that you can run into with all of the modeling and which model is best and which R squared value is best and all of that stuff. But we are going to stick with the basics for this course. Right? So if it looks linear-ish, then go with linear. If it looks like exponential, then go with exponential. Be wary of quadratics because they'll have high R squared values, but they're not always good fits for your data. All right, I'll see you back here for section 7-8.